Christ Way Church welcomes you. Let's hear what God has to say through Pastor Anu. Live powerfully. I'm going to talk on this subject this morning. Life is a challenge. We all are weak and stressed. We battle with depression. We need more energy to run this life. Our strength is depleted. We need power and strength from above. And God wants to help us with his power. And the real Christian life is not a code of ethics. It's a vital, personal, loving and living relationship with God Almighty. And he wants to help us to live this life joyfully and peacefully. In John chapters 14 to 16, we find Jesus giving his last minute instructions to his disciples, his instructions and comfort before his ascension to his father. He informed them that in his absence, he will send a replacement, another one to fill in for him to help them. In John 16, 7, Jesus says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Christ's departure was necessary for the helpers coming. Jesus, though, is no longer physically present today. He is very much present through His Holy Spirit, through His Spirit. His bodily presence could be only in one place at one time, but His Spirit is everywhere always. Hallelujah. None of us have met Jesus Christ in person, in flesh and in blood, as disciples had met Him. Yet, because of this helper, Holy Spirit, we are not left without the presence of Lord Jesus Christ. We can have Jesus personally with us always for his presence and for our help. John 14, 15 through 18, Jesus said, If you love me, you will obey my commandments and I will pray. The Father will give you another comforter to be with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world will not receive. The world and the people who don't understand Jesus Christ will not receive this Holy Spirit Jesus is telling. Only those who want, those who accept Jesus Christ will receive this Holy Spirit because the world neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and he will be with you. He is talking to his disciples and this Spirit will be always with that disciple still Jesus Christ comes. Back. Whoever has decided to become a disciple of Jesus Christ will be helped with this assistant called Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We need to realize that God bestows the Holy Spirit on us, the replacement of Jesus Christ in flesh. Holy Spirit is Christ in us. Holy Spirit is God in us. Why do we need Holy Spirit of God in our life? Jesus told, I am going to send the Holy Spirit. You should receive. So we should understand why do we need Holy Spirit in our life. Without the help of Holy Spirit, no human can understand about God. And without the help of the Holy Spirit, no human being can receive the power of God. And in John 16, 26, Jesus said, Holy Spirit is our counselor who counsels us on a daily basis. Holy Spirit will convict us our sins and help us understand that what sin can do to us, Holy Spirit will give us strength to overcome sins and face our troubles and tribulations righteously. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, my friends, you will not understand your sins. That is the reason many people are still arguing about the hidden sins that are revealed to them. If you have Holy Spirit with you, very well you will understand. Hallelujah. This is the importance of Holy Spirit with you. The reason Son of God, that is Jesus Christ, appeared in this world was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God commits sin. By this it may be seen who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 8 through 10. Devil is a gloomy God. Did you hear me? Devil is a gloomy God. 
whoever is led by devil will be gloomy. Who are these people? Bible says, whoever is not led by God are led by Satan. But they will not agree. But you see, they are gloomy. They are depressed. Whatever they have, they don't have joy. They want more, more, more. Even if they get more, they are not satisfied. Still, they desire for more. Because they are led by this gloomy God. Always gloomy. Hallelujah. And Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 5, This God, Satan, blinds the hearts of the unbelievers. When you don't want to understand the truth of God, this God will blind your understanding. You will not understand what I am preaching. Even if you open the Bible, somebody says, open the Bible and read, you will not understand. Because you are led by this gloomy God. Hallelujah. John 3.17, Jesus said, God sent the Son into this world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Christ saves us by destroying our sin. Like a doctor who amputates a foot full of gangrene or cut out the cancerous cell, Jesus came to cut our sin nature. He will cut and throw it. If you cooperate with Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. Your greatest enemy is not that person. You seem unable to forgive. But your greatest enemy is not even Satan. Your greatest enemy is your own sin, my friend. You may blame many people. But your sin is your greatest enemy. That if Holy Spirit is with you only, you will understand. Otherwise, you have all sort of arguments because the gloomy God is empowering you. You will not understand. Hallelujah. There is nothing more destructive in your life than your own personal sin. And believe it or not, this unseen enemy is waging a serious attack against us always. Hallelujah. Paul says in Romans 7.20, Sin is terribly destructive beyond our understanding. Thankfully, God has to send Jesus Christ into this world to redeem us who died to forgive our sins and heal our sin sickness. I always tell you, one sickness that the people don't understand is sin sickness. Every other sickness they can understand. Even they get a pain on their head, they know that it is headache. They themselves know the names of their own sickness or if they go to doctor, doctor will tell them, but they don't understand this sin, sickness. Hallelujah. Jesus said, so to understand this sin, sickness, we need the spirit of God. He is called the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Many people will tell, I am righteous. What sin I am doing? He said, I didn't come to call those people who pride in themselves that they are righteous. I came to the humble people who recognize that they are sinners. Mark 2, 17. Now it is Christmas season. People who are celebrating Christmas without experiencing Jesus Christ as their destroyer of their sin all over the world. Christmas is being celebrated. The birth of Jesus Christ is being celebrated. It is just dishonoring Christ. My friend, understand? We are not created to rebel against God Almighty. He is our creator. As a son or a daughter, is it right to rebel against your father? No, you know. You have that much telivaliki, that much understanding you have. Then, why the people are arguing and rebelling against God Almighty. God has sent His Son, Jesus, into this world to reveal this Father. Jesus told, I didn't come to preach my doctrine. I came to reveal the Father. I came to give the teachings of Lord God Almighty. But no guru or saint in this world tell like that. It is my teaching. I am telling you. This is my principle. They say, isn't it? Jesus didn't tell that. 
Jesus said, these principles are from God Almighty. Why did he come? To chop out our sin nature. Hallelujah. So people who rebel and not ready to follow Christ in his righteous way, love to celebrate Christ's birthday. How funny it is, isn't it? They want to make Mary. Not in their heart. They don't know. They just want to celebrate. They want some function to be celebrated. Christian function where Jesus Christ has not told to celebrate. He told to celebrate his victory on the cross. That victory was victory over our sin. He didn't even tell to celebrate Easter. His victory over cross was victory over our sin. That we have to celebrate every day. Every day should be a Christ's birthday in your life. Every day make biryani and eat. Every day make Christ's birthday cake and eat. Because you are grateful to Christ. I tell him, Jesus, you came into my life. You came into my family. You came to save me and my family. Today there is joy and peace in my family. Because of you, I celebrate. This is the celebration Jesus Christ wants. When? Every day. Not once in a year. That is not written in the Bible. People made their own religion. People made their own celebration. Hallelujah. You know that I am not going to that part. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Bible says the works of the devil are sins. When people commit sin, it's the work of the devil. The work of the devil is to tempt the people to sin. When they sin, his work is accomplished in them. So, Jesus Christ came to destroy not just the guilt in the people. That's what, what some people think. They think Jesus came to forgive the sins of the people. Yes, he has come to forgive the sins of the people and to lead them to a righteous path which a man cannot live. You need the help from above. Hallelujah. The enemy on the rebel planet is sin. The work of Satan is to tempt us to reject the authority of God over us. Satan works to nurture and cultivate the pride in the people and say, I am God. I heard many people telling, I am God. Why do I need a God? I heard. I don't know whether you have come across such people, whether you have met such people. I have met many people telling, I am God. I was so surprised. Why that person is telling, I am God. Satan is ruling that person and telling, that person is God. But see, that person is gloomy because his God is a gloomy God. I tell them, your God is Satan. That's why you are always gloomy. You are led by gloomy God. So Satan convinced these people that they don't need a God. God is unimportant for them. And Satan convinced them that their pride can achieve anything. Their pride will save anything. Hallelujah. Jesus knew we would face days or seasons of fear, loss, confusion, sickness. And we have no idea what the next situation would be. Jesus, before ascending to heaven, said to his disciples, in John 14, 1, let your hearts not be troubled. Believe in me. He's telling to his disciples, yes, in this world you will have a lot of troubles and tribulations. Don't worry. Believe in me. I will be there for you. I am there to help you. Trust me. Follow me. This is the commandment Jesus Christ has told. I will not leave you as orphans, Jesus says. I will come to you and send you a helper to be with you forever. John 14, 17 and 18. And that helper will do to us all the help what we want. It is true, my friend. Holy Spirit is a personal Jesus Christ with us. I have preached this long time back. I don't know whether you remember or not. The helper will help us to understand what we are going through. And helper will give us peace and joy. Without this helper, we are panic. What to do? Oh, the situations are terrible. I can't go through what I am going through. 
What a heat. What a heat. Last week I told you. In summer, eh? believers should not wear bikini. Spiritual bikini. You should have full dress. Huh? We are called to wear full dress in summer. Full righteousness. If Holy Spirit is there, you will be dressed fully. Otherwise, you will be with your bikini. Spiritual bikini. Have I explained that last week? Hallelujah. So even though Jesus is not here in flesh today, Holy Spirit is here and He is our constant companion. Believe me, my friends. He is our constant helper, comforter, guide. He will help us in times of difficulties. That is the reason me as a woman today here as a preacher teacher, mother, in all the role. Who is my helper? Not you, I know, but the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He is our friend. He is our comforter. He is our counselor. Hmm? Hallelujah. As a person, he will do all this work. If you go and meet a person like this, you are happy. If somebody is there to teach you, somebody is there to counsel you, somebody is there to guide you, you are happy. But Holy Spirit will do all this work for you. The comfort of the Holy Spirit is that you have a real and abiding friend who loves you. A real friend will not abandon you in the midst of your trouble. Isn't it? Tell me. Your dearest dost. Whom you can believe that person will never leave you. Our Christ is more than that person, my friend. Understand? Hallelujah. In the difficulties, but you should depend upon him. Like a comforter, like a friend, he will encourage you like a friend. He will be beside you. He will give you strength, right? When it is needed the most. I am not preaching something from the Bible, my friends. My preachings are experienced words of God. You all know me. I don't just blabber from this pulpit. I am experiencing. My life is a testimony for all what I am preaching. You are the testimony for that. You people are seeing my life. Hallelujah. He is our real friend. Our real friend will never leave us in our difficulties. You should talk to him. You should go to him. Even if that real friend is in US, in States, you will contact him, isn't it? You will be over your phone. You will be talking. You know that if you talk to that real friend, you will get something. Hmm? How long you can talk? You will talk the same way. You have to talk to him. Hallelujah. Like a counselor and a friend, Jesus will offer you wise advice and provide help with difficult decisions. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares you. Friends, understand who can care you more than God Almighty? Can you find a person? Then why do you reject that person? Hallelujah. So Jesus is really telling us that when we receive Holy Spirit, we will get another helper, counselor, comforter, friend, healer. He is our healer. You should know to get the healing from this helper. I am getting the healing from this helper. That's why I am preaching you know. What I am preaching is not false or just preaching for the sake of preaching. He is my healer. Hallelujah. So, Holy Spirit is your healer. He will heal you, wonderful God. And Holy Spirit is somebody that would do to us all what Jesus Christ was doing when he was with disciples. We are reading what he was doing when Jesus Christ was with disciples. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing, my friend, he will do for you. John 14, 17 underscores the fact that Holy Spirit who is with us is another Savior just like Jesus Christ. A replacement, a replacement of Jesus Christ, so to speak, can act for the physical absence of Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit does his work for those who follow him and have fellowship. Others will not find him. Jesus told the world will not know 
If you are living like a worldly person, even after you have accepted Jesus Christ, you will not know him. You need to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. What Jesus did for his disciples when he was physically present here, he taught them, he guided them, he strengthened them in times of their difficulties, he helped them, he comforted them. So, same things he will do to us. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is Jesus in his physical absence. Hallelujah. Let's understand the truth. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Therefore, he comforts us through the word. You should be familiar with the word of God. You should study the word of God and understand. Otherwise, you will not know who is speaking. The other fellow also will speak to you. Who? The gloomy God. So, contradiction. All doubt, confusion. Unless you are well versed with the Bible, unless you are well versed with the understanding of Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot understand this. All confusion, doubt will be troubling you. So, you get this understanding only through the word of God. This understanding you get when you read the word or through the word preached. 1 Thessalonians 1, 5 and 1 Thessalonians 2, 13. Honoring and ready to obey the word of God are the key to hear God's voice. Honoring and ready to obey the God are the key to receive this helper's help or to have this personal Jesus Christ with us. If you are not ready to obey him, if you are not ready to honor him, you won't find him. You may feel the presence. You may be shaking all over. Hallelujah. You may not even aware of the spirit and its present in your life until you are taught about it. Many of the believers are not able to understand this personal savior living inside of them. Hallelujah. So every believer in Christ receive the Holy Spirit in their heart. If you are a born again baptized person, Holy Spirit is living in you. You cannot understand, but that is the truth. This is the spiritual truth. Don't tell me, show me sister. Read the word. Anything is wrong in your body or whatever is wrong in your heart, you go to a heart specialist, he will tell. You cannot tell, no, that part is not wrong in my heart or that sickness is not there in my heart. You will not tell because he is the authority. You should believe the authorities. When I was crying and praying to God about my ministry, I was telling God, who is believing what I am teaching? God was telling me, daughter, specialized people do their work. To do anything for this electric work. You may know chota mota work, but who will do best? Electrician. If you have a plumping problem, you do know something to do. You know to fix. But plumper will do the best work. When you are sick, you do know certain medicine to take. Even you may be knowing to inject. But you don't know all about the sickness and the healing. You have to go to a specialist. So he told me, daughter, you are my specialist for my word. Hmm? People may know something about God. They may argue with you. Don't worry. It is just like this. You know plumbing work. He told me. Then I was strengthened. This is the comforter. Being with me. This is how I am today here. Sometimes I cry. How these people are arguing? How rebellious these people are? This is truth. Still why they are fighting with me? I'll cry and ask. God was telling me. I was so happy. Is it not correct? God will pick some people and give the gift and anoint them. They are the specialist. You have to believe. You cannot go to a heart specialist and tell that, no doctor, I don't have any problem. You have some serious problem is developing, but you can't understand. None of the symptoms are seen outside, but doctor is telling, yes, this is developing in you. No doctor, nothing is a problem for me. You will argue, some people will argue. Same thing, my friend. Understand. Believe the authorities. Understand who is teaching and preaching. It was really a comfort for me. This is how my helper Jesus is with me. 
I am working for my Jesus. Without the help of my Jesus Christ, I cannot do his work. This helper can be with you. This is what I am teaching you today. He is not just for me. He is for all those who are ready to follow Jesus Christ carrying his cross. Only they will find this helper. Others will never find him. Hmm? Gloomy God will come to fight with them. Little plumping work you know. You will start fixing it. Huh? Tomorrow somewhere else the leakage will come. Ayo, here I have fixed how the leakage came there. Don't do that. Call the plumber. He's the specialist, experienced person. You know that. That is how you know some chota mata spiritual understanding. Don't argue with the specialist. I don't know why I am telling. It's for you. Hallelujah. What I was telling is you have the Holy Spirit living in you. Acts 2, 38. If you are a born again baptized person. So how do or how does this Holy Spirit work in us? Ephesians 3, 20. This is my Favorite word I always preach about this verses. It says, Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power working in us. This verse is explaining more than what we are expecting or imagining can happen in our lives. If the spirit is working in us. Oh, last week we learned Delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. You are all working to fulfill the desire of your heart. While you are studying, while you are working, you have a desire in your heart. Hmm? But still it is not fulfilling because the gloomy God is leading you. You are gloomy. You have everything actually. Still, you find fault and you have some lack. Because gloomy God is leading you. Hallelujah. You should understand. But if our Lord is leading, huh? He's telling more than what you imagined or expected. Wow. What a beautiful verse. Parallel to Psalms 37 4, which says, Delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of the heart. Wonderful God. So many times, so many, many times I have preached about this. Now also, I am preaching. However, that power will not work until. You put it into work. Hmm? Something is wrong. You have to call the plumber or electrician. If you sit and look at you, there is a problem. Light is not running. My fan is not working. If you sit and cry, it will be repaired. Or you will take some screwdriver. If you do something, it will work. Sometimes little, it will work. Isn't it? The same way. The hell from God Almighty, Holy Spirit has been sent to help us to do the will of God. But He won't do anything until we ask. Just think, the Spirit of God, I am talking to those who are born again, baptized. The Spirit of God is living inside of you and waiting on you to call on Him for your help. But you are not bothering Him. Hallelujah. When you are in problem, you are worried. You are worried. You are not asking the Holy Spirit. Isn't it? So, Holy Spirit will be telling you, I am here. My dear daughter, my dear son, I am here. Ask me. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will lead you. I will heal you. I want to comfort you. He says, I know your problem that you are going through. He says, I know your sickness that you are going through. Come to me. Ask me. Hmm? Hear from me. Get the counseling from me. Get the teaching from me. Obey what I say. Oh, this is difficult. Then, your problem will be solved. Your sickness will be healed. First John 3.22 says, God gives us whatever we ask because we obey Him. Hmm? He will tell what you have to obey. In the midst of your problem, in your sickness, He will tell you what you have to obey. To obey God will give the strength also. You start obeying. You will get the problems solved. I have to tell you one testimony here. I have been doing yoga at home. I'm an exercise freak. You all know. Then I said it is not working in the sense it takes a lot of time. When I do yoga, phone will be ringing. I have to attend. It keeps going. 
Then I thought, okay, let me do something. So I started going for jogging and walking. So after a long time, I'm going for jogging and walking. So I keep the mobile at home. I started, my knee started paining like anything. Ask my husband. I didn't tell him. Knee started paining like anything. I can't even walk, you know. In our house, full of stairs, I can't climb. I thought, what? I can't run, no? Before I used to run. I used to go for jogging. I stopped that. What? I have become old, maybe. I am old. So, in the old age, I cannot do. But I have seen old people also running. Huh? Older than me. Old age people are running, I have seen. But I cannot do. No, I will run. I didn't give up. Holy Spirit, you are with me. Heal me. Tell me why I am not able to run. God reveal my sin. I have confessed. I said, no. I will try to delight in you. I was sad because of my ministry. Because of my ministry means people are not accepting. This is truth. People want easy way. If I preach about easy way, there are many people in the church. I can lead many, 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 many people. But this is a restricted way. Only chosen people will come to our church who are chosen to go through this narrow way. I had that worry in me. I said, no, God, I will delight. You give me strength. You give me strength. I will delight. I am joyful. I started singing songs. You see, the pain is not there. I can jump. I couldn't jump. <laughs> Only 10 days over, I started going for walking and jogging. I didn't even tell my husband. But today, I don't have that pain. I couldn't even walk, my friends. I said, no, in Jesus' name, I will walk. Every day, I was walking in the same way. Knee is paining. Knee is paining. But still, I was walking. In Jesus' name, I can do, I can do, I can do. See, this is Jesus. Health is a blessing. When you lose your health, you are sad, worried with your pain. What you can do, my friends, understand? God wants to heal your body. Last week also I told, Bible says, delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of the heart. People will not desire a healthy body, especially when they become old. They think in the old age, we have to be in the sick bed. So they will be having life insurance, sickness insurance. I don't know. I don't go into this because I believe in God. I know that I will live with the power of God. I'll be healthy because my God is with me. He came to save me. This should be the desire of your heart. Don't think like the worldly people in the old age you will be sick or in between you should be sick. In between you have to go to doctor. Otherwise, you are not a human being. Yes, if you are a human being without Jesus Christ, you have to go. Definite. No doubt about that. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you don't have to. Give our God a big clap, my friend. He is Jesus Christ, wonderful God. That's the reason I always tell you, I'm not just blabbering something from this pulpit. Out of my testimony, I'm preaching. That's the reason. Today, with all my pain, I'm here. I have decided that I delight in my profession. I have left my job and running God's work, isn't it? I don't go back as a failure. No, I will work. I will work. Hallelujah. This is what I told. Yes, Lord. Even if nobody is in the church, many times I have decided, but still I am sad. I want, I want, I want to give this Jesus to many people. That's my heart's desire. I will think, why people have to suffer? Why can't they come to Jesus Christ and obey? Why this much of rebellion in the heart of the people? I will walk and pray for all the people who are walking there. Lord, let these people know Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Let them know. They think he is a Christian God. They think Jesus came to convert the people. All misunderstanding. He is not a Christian God. He is your God. He doesn't have any religion. Jesus came to bring a relationship with man and God. That's all. That's the religion. How people are adamant. You know that when you go for evangelism, how many people will argue, pray and go? What did the Bible say? If my people turn from their wickedness and pray, I will heal the land, isn't it? What is happening? You are not praying for the land and you are only telling people argued with me. People came to fight with me. First you have to sit and pray for the people. Where you are going? Lord, let them understand you. Why they are keeping Jesus as a Christian God? You came to save the people. 
Jesus wants the people to live happily, peacefully, with all health, prosperity. This is conversion. Can you tell me? This is called conversion. Yes, conversion of your heart to God. It is not a conversion to a religion. Hallelujah. You should understand. Cry, my friends. Cry with me. Then you go and tell. You get some people. Straight away, you should not go and walk into somebody's house. Hallelujah. Wonderful God. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. He was blessing the Corinthian church, pronouncing this. Let the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with you. Okay. To have the fellowship of Holy Spirit, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit first. Ephesians 5.18 says, we should keep asking God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Then you should ask to lead you. You may be praying. That is not the fellowship with Holy Spirit. Huh? Don't misunderstand. Your routine prayer is not the fellowship with Holy Spirit. Who is Holy Spirit? He is a guide. He is our comforter. He is our teacher. He will lead us into all the truth. He will give us wisdom, knowledge. Isaiah 11, 2 says. He give us wisdom, knowledge. So, when you are fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, you should talk. Fellowshipping means you are being with the Holy Spirit. So, what will you do? You will be silent. No, you will be talking. I have seen the talkative people always talking, always talking. But they will never talk to God. They will talk. Whoever comes, are you? They only want to go other illa bani inno sulpa kutkoli yake star gender. Inno sulpa time spend madi. Isn't it? They will not speak. Believers I am telling. But still they will not speak to Holy Spirit. You should talk. Holy Spirit, lead me. Teach me. Guide me. Make me understand what I am going through. Why I am going through. Give me knowledge. Give me wisdom. Give me strength. This is what... You have to talk. Then you are fellowshipping with Holy Spirit. Otherwise you are not fellowshipping with Holy Spirit. Disciples will fellowship with Holy Spirit. Your prayer is not called fellowshipping with Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, all these verses I told you. And Isaiah 11 2 says, Holy Spirit will give us understanding, might, knowledge and the fear of God. If you don't have the fear of God, I don't have the fear of God, Lord. Please, let me have the fear of God. You should ask. Unless you ask, you don't get it. Huh? Hallelujah. Although all believers are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, not all the believers are filled and led by the Spirit. To be led and filled with the Holy Spirit means you are experiencing Holy Spirit's gentle guidance, counseling, help and strength to control your life. So, although Holy Spirit is living in all the believers, not all believers experience the power of Holy Spirit because there are three kinds of people in this world. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 14, 15. First group of people, even after they are born again, baptized, they live like natural people. They are those who don't trust Christ to pay for their sins. They don't trust and depend upon Christ. They don't want anybody to control their life. I am there to control. These people are called natural people. They cannot be led by the Holy Spirit. Second, spiritual person. They trust God and the power of Holy Spirit to live their everyday life. They yield to Christ's teaching. They are like fools. They are humble people. They have constant fellowship with Holy Spirit. They are the spiritual people. Third, carnal person. These carnal people are more in the churches. Hmm? They trust Jesus Christ. They have accepted Jesus Christ. They want Jesus Christ. But they don't obey everything what Jesus Christ says. They don't want all the ways Jesus Christ is asking them to go. Restricted ways. They are called carnal people. They want the world also. At the same time, they want God also. That is the reason people are not receiving the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, Acts 1, 8, Jesus said, you will receive power. Eh? The message title is live powerfully. Jesus is telling to the disciples in Acts 1.8. You will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Jesus made a big deal of coming of the Holy Spirit and his presence. Was defined in the early churches. 
but today his role is minimized and even ignored completely in many churches and among many believers because i can tell in a church 75 to 90% of the believers are carnal believers they are there they will worship god they are with the bible they will do everything but they don't accept all the leadings of jesus christ so that is the reason they are not getting the complete advantage of the holy spirit jesus said it is your advantage it is your advantage to the disciples he is telling the jesus christ was all the time with the disciples and he is telling it is your advantage that i go away that means a personal jesus christ is always with you just understand my friends that scripture in john 16 7 so you should understand he is not far away he is with you he will be with you but you should be with him you are not finding him because you are not ready to be with you he is all around you he wants to be with you he wants to have fellowship with you but you are ignoring him he is grieved when a believer does all this bible says don't grieve the holy spirit bible says don't quench the holy spirit hallelujah first thessalonians 5:19 and colossians 1 26 and 27 say this is the mystery that has been hidden from ages that is christ in you hallelujah and he will help us to endure our life however difficulty we are going through he will help us to carry on our life through this narrow way matthew 24 13 says one who endures till the end will be saved so if we fill with the holy spirit and if we have fellowship with him in the midst of all our test and temptations holy spirit will help us he will hear his voice thus we can control all our negative thoughts i don't have time you know that eh more than 98% of our thoughts are negative if you are a human being that is what is happening but if you are led by the holy spirit you will cancel that hallelujah the negativity will come you can immediately overcome immediately and these negative and the sinful emotions and thoughts and actions you can overcome and you can endure the troubles and live a successful life a happy life a peaceful life this is guarantee my friends i am not a sales rep to 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 sell jesus christ here hmm? i am not that i am telling you the real things hallelujah if we live in spirit and walk by the spirit as galatians 5:16 says we don't become high minded we will be humble people day by day we will not provoke each other we will not envy each other we don't be upset or worried when a problem comes we get power to love our enemies and we will live together as a christian community in church there will be unity in church there will be fellowship because in church you have caring people everyone will care each other there is no jealousy there is no envy there is no anger there is no bitter eh if you are led by holy spirit you will be united with the pastor and the church pastor is the leader if you are a divisible person holy spirit is not leading you understand holy spirit is in you but you are rejecting his leading you will have unity first with the pastor if you don't have the unity with the pastor why do you come to church isn't it you are a divisive person understand so when we are led by the holy spirit there is unity in the fellowship church we are helping each other to grow up to the maturity of christ we are helping each other to be a hard working person there is no jealousy eh no jealousy no pride no ego because everything is coming down hallelujah and when we live in unity what will happen the holy spirit anointing will increase bible says in psalms 133 1 and 2 hmm? you will get more holy spirit when you are united with the people who have unity please go home and read psalms 133 1 2 i don't have time to explain that you will understand so if you don't fellowship with holy spirit we feel dead gloomy god is leading us having no inner joy peace gloomy god is leading us and jesus said that out of your innermost being shall flow the rivers of living water from whomever this living water is not flowing 
there is death. You are living a dead life. Eh? An instrument without battery. Your battery is not working. Understand, all such time, gloomy God is leading you. If you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are happy. You are peaceful. You are not upset. Yes, all those negativity will come. As Jesus is with you, you are learning every day. He is my teacher. He is your counselor. Huh? He gives you might, knowledge, strength. He will give you wisdom, Isaiah 11.2 says. Hmm? So you are becoming a better person. So you will understand all these things, what you are going through. And John 7.38 says, Out of your innermost being shall flow the rivers of living water. Indwelling Holy Spirit needs to control you. That you don't like. Ah. He wants to control you. If you say, don't want, I want to be in my pleasure. He will not be there. If you allow him to control you, he will be your companion, my friend. I feel the tremendous presence all over here. Wonderful God. God is helping you to understand. This is not this lady, I know. But God himself is making you understand about himself. Don't rebel. You are not created to rebel against God Almighty. God will use his specialist. Don't fight with the specialist. You do not chota mota knowledge. I'm not ignoring that. But blindly believe the people who are not hypocrites. Hmm? Then whom can you believe in this world? Tell me. You will never trust anyone. You are such a person. You have to change. Hallelujah. So there is no reluctance on Holy Spirit part, but there is reluctance on our part because of our unwillingness to part our sin. Eh? Nobody should control me. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Holy Spirit will not be there with you. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of God live richly in you. And Ephesians 5.18 says, Fill with the Holy Spirit. You should never forget. Always fill with the Holy Spirit. You should keep asking. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Like how we are praying always, how we are meditating always, you should know to ask Holy Spirit to fill you always because if you want Holy Spirit to control your life, if you don't want to give your control, don't ask. You are not asking because you don't want to give your control. Because of the indwelling word and the way we experience indwelling spirit, we can understand all these things are true. Unless you experience, you think I am talking bogus. Huh? That's the reason I told you. I am not just blabbering something from here. Many of us are living our life with a dead battery. Hmm? We don't realize the inner power that we have in Holy Spirit. We feel dead inside and living a sorrowful, depressed, miserable, pitiable life after you are born again. Now you know. What is wrong with you? You have no fellowship with Holy Spirit. You have fellowship with everyone else in this world, but not with Holy Spirit. That's the reason. No joy. Can't get up because the weight of the life is too much. Ayo, one more day. One more day. Eh, you can't walk. Jesus told those who are carrying heavy burden, come. And learn from me. You will find lightness. You have to learn from Christ, not just prayer. It is easy to pray. That is what the whole world is doing. Even the people outside Jesus Christ are also praying. But they don't learn from God Almighty. That is difficult. Jesus told, you are carrying heavy burden. Come to me and learn from me. You will get rest for your souls. What is your soul thinking part? Your heart? Your heart is always heavy. Isn't it? Jesus called you, my friends. Only in Jesus Christ you get the lightness. Nowhere else. Some people will go for all the religious tour to get some peace. Do they get? Some people will dip themselves in the water and come out. Just like Agalkai you are putting in the water. Oh, sweet. <laughs> eh, bitter God. Bitter God, you will put it in the water and say, oh, now it will be sweet. Like that, many people will go dip themselves in the water and say, I am holy. Foolishness, isn't it? Easy way. You cannot be holy like that. You cannot be pure like that. You have to change your heart. You have to change your character. Hallelujah. 
people are suffering and living a pitiable life because of the unbelief in first place and the lack of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. My friend, understand. Jesus told, it is for your advantage that I go away. If I go away, I will send you a helper. You are rejecting that helper who is telling, accept me. A divine God is telling, accept me as your helper. You are rejecting him. Understand how rebellious you are. Understand how rude you are. Think of your wicked heart. Think. Today you have to repent of your heart and get up from that seat that you are sitting. He wants us to have his strength, power operating within us to live a peaceful and victorious life. Ephesians 3.20 says, with the power working in us, he can give us more than what we ask or imagined, imagined for. Ah, oh, God is a man to tell lies. No. These are the divine promises. For that, he said, let the power work in you. That is the topic of my message. Live powerfully. Why you are living as a failure? Always gloomy. No pleasure. No happiness. Hmm? Somebody says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you can't smile. Because gloomy God is leading you. <laughs> you are serving him all the day. Then, how can that person not bless you? <laughs> if you serve Christ, Christ will bless you. You will have peace. You will be satisfied. Even if nothing is happening good, my friend, you will be happy. Huh? <laughs> my, my knee was paining like anything, hurting like anything, my friend. I couldn't even walk little. Anybody saw me with a gloomy face? You tell me. I'm always with a cheerful face to serve the people. That means I have not fallen any sickness. I have not gone through any pain. Why, my friend? Because I have this helper. That's the reason I told I'm not a sales rep to sell Jesus Christ. I'm talking the real fact. So don't deny this helper and love with the pride and the rebellion of your heart. Having fellowship with Holy Spirit is our absolute necessary. Let's close our eyes in prayers. Mm -hmm.